People, how you doing? Well, I just got something. And I think I know what it is. I think I ordered two headsets, as you guys know. And I'm pretty sure this is the one from EPOS. Let's find out. Oh yeah. Been looking forward to this. Yes, there you go. It is the H3 Pro Hybrid. All right, very nice. Looking forward to doing the review on that sucker. Just wish they had another color, you know? But uh, uh, blue it is. Blue it is. Okay, let's open this bad boy up. Let's see what we're dealing with here. I don't do unboxings. I'm not really into unboxings. I don't really have the patience for it. I'm trying my best right now. Usually I would have just carved this box to shreds and taken out my headset and be off to the races. Sh trying to show some constraint here and some professionalism. All right, well, first of all, let's check this out. What does it say on the side here? Mm -hmm. Okay, closed acoustic wireless gaming headset, H3 Pro Hybrid from EPOS with a two year warranty. Very nice. All right. Okay, so. Let's just slide out. Something is not right here. Oh, here we go comes up all right hmm. pretty I don't care for the blue though I don't really care for the blue the dark blue oh, and the cups are smaller oh yes because it's the h3 that's why yeah if you guys saw my h3 um, review comparison there yeah I mentioned that the that the H3 was, the cups were smaller. Like, you know, I would give that to like my seven year old, right? <laughs> I prefer a, a bigger cup. Uh, this is the, this is the H6, right? And you can see by the size of them that this is, I, I don't know, let's just say 30%, 20 to 30% smaller than the H6, the size of those cups. But when I put it on, it still fit me fine. And uh, it just felt smaller and which didn't give me much confidence. Okay, one second here, just taking a look at the uh, H6. I like the way the H6 feels, but I'm not sure about this one. Soft. Go with some cheaper material on the top and then this one at the bottom here. Hmm. Swivel, swivel. Yeah, okay. Nice, let's see here. Okay, so they got the indents and they've got the numbers, which I love. Everybody should do that. You'd be surprised, 2022 and they're still Companies that are making headsets without proper indents or labels on the indents. Okay, so there's your flip to mute mic. Again, it's a smaller mic with a different style. The end is different than the H6 Pro. Does this one come off? Yes, it does. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so there you go. Look at the size difference yeah look at that 
See what I mean about it being smaller? It works. It's just... I wish it was... Uh, well, maybe they'll come out with an H6 um, Pro Hybrid. And then I can get that one. I couldn't keep this one because it just feels too too childlike for me. And I'm not even a big guy. Uh, I, I got big hands, but... Um, everything else is... Average. <laughs> Did I just say that on on YouTube to the whole world? Oh, it's out there now. Gonna have to live with it. Okay, all right. USB C. Okay, okay. Let's take a look what's in here now. Just your standard stuff. There's your charging cable with dongle. There's your. <clears throat> okay, oh, these are the these are the covers for the. Uh, for here, All right, and then uh, there's your documentation, bunch of documentation. There you go, your standard stuff. Yeah, oh, there's an extra cable in here. This one must be for console. This one's for console. No, nope, this one is a charging cable. Then what the hell is this one? Oh, this is for the dongle, for the wireless. This is your charging cable. There's your other cable and uh, for the console, and there's uh, the one for the dongle. All right, so we're gonna need this, this, and this. All righty. Well, I'm super excited. You're super excited. We're all super excited to see how this bad boy faces up against. Let's take a look here. All right, so I don't have the HS80 from Corsair with me anymore. I did a review on that one uh, a few weeks ago and I was thoroughly impressed with it. It's an excellent headset. Um, it's one of the best right now that you can get. The sound is really good. The Comfort is decent and the microphone is excellent for a wireless headset. Um, until that came along, I had been using the GSP 670, which um, was very good when it first came out, but there was room for improvement. And I think the Corsair HS80 is a big improvement over the uh, EPOS uh, G GSP 670. Um, the pads here they all they all worn out this was this happened within uh, a year and it's happened to other owners too this is just poor workmanship by uh by Zenheiser this is a Zenheiser product at the time epos has said that uh their future headsets like these ones here the h3 and the h6 won't do that i haven't had the h6 a year so I don't know if, if their claims are true. We'll find out in, uh, you know, in a year from now. Uh, but so far, so good. Anyway, back to the GSP670. This has been the flagship uh, wireless headset from Sennheiser. And now that EBOS is doing everything, they've got this one. So we're going to compare these two and see if, uh, if things have improved. And then um, we'll also, you know... Uh, compare the experience of this to the reigning champ of headsets which is the h6 pro okay all right that's it so there you go guys uh it's uh gonna be an interesting few days give me a couple of days and it, it will be just seconds for you guys but for me it will be a couple of days all right so i'll see you momentarily okay all right so I've had a few days to play around with the uh, H3 Pro Hybrid and I have an opinion to share with you. So let's get this uh, comparison review uh, on the way. All right, so let me start off by saying that I will be putting the specs of these two headsets on the screen for you in the video so that you can see how they compare to each other, okay? 
Um, so all that information will be there. So just be patient. It will come up on the screen. I will include um, a microphone recording so you guys can hear what it sounds like when I play um, Battlefield 5 uh, on the PS5. And so that will be in the video as well. So just, you know, be patient for that. Okay, so let's get this started. This is a comparison between the GSP 670 uh, from EPOS. At the time it was originally made, they were Sennheiser, but now they are EPOS. And the H3 Pro Hybrid from EPOS. This is their brand new uh, wireless headset. So this was their previous flagship headset wireless, and now this is their current one. So, you know, which one is better? Well, for those of you who don't want all the little details, um, I'm just going to come out and tell you straight off the bat, the H3 Pro Hybrid is a better choice than the 670. This is an older model. This has been around for a few years, so it makes sense. You would expect that this one would be a, a better choice and uh, that it would be, you know, upgraded and what have you. So EPOS has not disappointed. They have done this one. They've done a bunch of uh, features into this one that this one doesn't have, um, and they've improved upon it, and it is a best, better choice. Now, these two headsets are still very expensive. Uh, and I just think that they are they're too much money um, for what they, you know, what they offer. I don't know why it has to be so expensive, but it is. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, at the end when we talk about the HS80. Okay. Uh, the port is USB-C, as you can see right there. When you charge this, it will tell you, you can hear that in the in the air cup, it will say that it's, you know, above 80%, below 80%. There's a little message that comes on. And so that's really, really cool. And when you power it, power it off, there's a there's a power button right here. It will tell you that it's that it's powering off. So that's that's a cool feature to have. This is a very, very good headset. It is identical to the H3, which is the wired version, other than the fact that it, it is wireless, right? But it's identical in the design of it, the, the weight of it, the, 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 the shape of the cups and the size of the cups. This is a smaller headset than the H6, which is right here, H6 Pro. So I'm hoping that one day they make a wireless version of the H6 Pro because the H6 Pro is bigger. It has bigger cups. Uh, it, I have an average size head, head, but I prefer the, the bigger um, headset. This one seems, um, although it's doable, it just seems a little bit too small for me. I would give this to my to my kid or to you know uh, somebody who is more um, petite. If you have a large head, then I, I this, you know, it, again, it, it could still work. It can work no matter what size head. But it's like when you see those really, really heavy, heavy people squeezing themselves into a little tiny, you know, car like a Suzuki or a Mini Metro back in the day when the Metro, the Mini was really, really small. Uh, it's like, you know, you, yeah, you can drive like that, but why would you, right? Why, why, why would you do that? So I would get a bigger headset uh, for me personally, but it does work. Okay, so uh, comfort-wise... Comparing this to the um, 670, the comfort is better on the H3 Pro Hybrid. The 670, when I first got it, it was a little clampy and the headband here padding is a little thin so that, so after time, you know, it could be an hour, it could be a couple of hours, I, I don't know, you know, depends on, on the person, but you start to feel it on the top of your head. I don't get that with the H3 uh, Pro Hybrid. So the padding on the top of the head, I'm uh, oh, sorry, in the headband is superior than what you get on the 670. The 670 has this, I call it a pressure gauge because it's a system that, that allows you to um, select the amount of pressure that you want the uh, headphones to um, to clamp in on. So it's, it's like a clamp in thing. So it just moves in a little bit and out a little bit. Um, I've never liked it. I, th I I don't think it's very good, the implementation of it. 
And thank God that this one does not have that because it's just a, a gimmicky thing that I don't think was ever necessary. And um, this one doesn't have it. So overall, when you put this on your head, it's just a better experience. It has that, that uh, suede um, material for the cup. And this one has uh, that awful, I, I, I guess it, it started off as like a suede, but it turned into this nightmare that just peeled off of the uh, headset, you know, after a year or so. And um, as I mentioned before, when reviewing this with the HS80, EPOS did say that they've changed the material, so that will not happen again, right? So it's not supposed to happen on, on this one, but only time will tell. So, you know, if it happens again in a year from now or whatever, I will be sure to to let you know. And I hope it doesn't because that's going to be very, very bad news for EPOS. I mean, if they if this thing peels, I will not trust them again. I already got burned on a four hundred dollar headset. If I get burned again on another four hundred dollar headset, EPOS, uh, I, I wouldn't give a squirt of piss for your ass. I tell you that I'll be pissed. So it better not happen. But um, so design-wise, this is this is nicer. It's less bulky. The microphone is detachable, which you can't do that on the uh, on the um, 670. So that's great. And the uh, the headband is is more comfortable. The cups are more comfortable. This is it's nice and deep. Um, I don't know where my I don't know I don't have my um, my ruler i don't know where the hell, the hell i did with it but trust me on this one this is pretty deep it goes from the tip of my finger to my knuckle to the first knuckle right so whatever that is an inch so that's pretty deep and um i don't have any problems with it my ears don't touch the the, the back of it uh this just generally just sits very comfortably on my head with very little camp clamping force and uh, so outstanding well done Epos. Okay, so we talked about the design. We like the design. Um, we think the design is superior. It's less bulky. It's less. There's so much going on with this 670. This one is a little bit more simpler and streamlined and very very nice. The comfort is superior on this one than here. We talked about that already. Um, let's talk about some of the features. Um, the volume wheel on the uh, H3 is very easy to well no it's not very easy to move it's you have to apply a pressure there's no indentation again they have left out the indentation in the volume wheel which i despise i don't understand why they would do that that little tiny indentation which you get on the game one uh, which is right over here in the game um, zero and also on the pc38x it's it's such a uh, it makes turning the volume wheel so much easier and effortless. Well, I don't know why they would ever change that, but anyway, they've gone with this no indentation. They've got a very loose wheel. It just goes round and around forever. Which I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't like that on the H3. On the H3, I, I there was a limit as to what you can go, if I'm not mistaken. But this one just goes around and around and around and around and around. But inside the ear cup, you will hear two beeps when you've reached the maximum volume. You don't hear anything when you reach the, the lowest volume. This here, the 670, does not have that. It has a very stiff volume wheel and there's no power on button. So to, to turn this, this headset on, you actually have to turn the volume towards full and at some point it will turn on the, the headset um some people like the very stiff it was super stiff when you first got it it's eased up now um but i guess overall i prefer it just feels more comfortable with the stiffer one than it does with this very light loose volume wheel um People will complain about this, but it will never be as bad as people complain about it. It's, it's, at the end of the day, it's totally doable. It's, it's a minor thing, but it's just one of those areas where they just kind of cheaped out and it just wasn't necessary. They, when, when you're paying this kind of money, which costs like the same as this, it, it, it should be, the, the volume wheel should not be that cheap. 
the um the indentations on here uh for the head headband you can see them uh hopefully the camera can pick it up but it was it says on it it says you know one all the way down to 10 and it's very it's stiff and the, the 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 indentations are you know they're there you can feel them they can set good super super happy with that right you got like a metal band in there now this one doesn't have that this one has all plastic you can you can hear it clicking but they move between each other a little bit too much like see right there i did like two or three and then and then i have to go one at a time there's no uh, indication as to what number you're on so if it comes out of place you have to go back to the beginning and you have to count again one two three four five six like, it's, it's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous so straight off the bat the design of the h3 is way better in that regards um what else what else what else what else what else the okay so features this has um, active noise cancelling and it also has bluetooth now this one the 670 also has bluetooth all right it does not have active noise cancelling uh, now these work uh, on on the PS5 and they also work on the PlayStation uh, on the PC. So when you have it on the PC, there's going to be software, right? The the EPOS Gaming Suite, and allow you to um, you know play around with the settings, the EQs, and different presets and things like that. You don't get that functionality on the PlayStation, right? And I, I would assume I don't know I don't have an Xbox, but I would assume it's the same on the Xbox. You don't get that functionality but if i'm wrong i'm wrong please you know let me know in the comments so when you plug this into the playstation 5 you, you can do it with the dongle for wireless or you can just use the the cable plug it in and and it will work but you won't get any of the um features um except for the um i shouldn't have said that because you actually do get the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth works. I just meant like the presets and the and, and stuff like that, right? The equalizers and all that. You don't get that on the um, PlayStation. But the Bluetooth works. Well, here's the good thing about the Bluetooth, guys. The Bluetooth on the E3, the E3. What the hell am I saying? The 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 uh, the Bluetooth on the H3, it works to 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 answer phone calls. So you can have a you can connect to your phone and you can take phone calls, but you can also play music. And you can do it while you're playing the game. So I'm playing the game. I'm playing Battlefield 5. And I'm listening to music off of my iPhone. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, I haven't had that in a long, 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 long time. I can't remember what was the first headset that allowed me to do that. I think it was a Turtle Beach headset that I had that allowed me to do that. And But Turtle Beach was just you know such a crappy quality that i couldn't stay couldn't couldn't last with the headsets but this one here the 670 it doesn't allow you to do that it allows you to connect to the phone so you can take a phone call but you can't play music while you're playing the the game right you can't bring in you can't bring in music into it so that was like another thing that this one another limitation that this had even though it was so expensive so again they've in, they've improved that so straight off the bat I can tell you right now, a lot of people are going to want that. They're going to want to be able to play music, their own music while they're gaming. That's a huge thing. This has that feature. However, when I did it, it was not perfect. It kept cutting out. My phone was this close to me. It was right here. Sometimes I put it over there. Sometimes I put it over there, right? It was that close to me. And yet I would have intermittent failure of the bluetooth it was fully charged this headset was fully charged and again i would have intermittent failure of the bluetooth so i don't know if it's my copy i don't think it's my copy i think i'm willing to bet that if i grabbed any copy of this headset it would probably do the same thing it's just they always seem to have trouble implementing bluetooth properly you know Anyway, if anybody has this out there and they're watching this video, you know, and you you played around with the Bluetooth and the music, and if you've you know ex had nothing but good good um, you know a, a good experience, or if you've had a similar experience to me, please comment. Let me know. I'd be interested to know. All right, but so not a great implementation of the Bluetooth, even though it does offer it. Now the ANC is another thing that 
I could tell I could tell when it turns on. So when I turn the ANC on, the active noise cancelling, I can I can hear a, a, a change in the sound, so I know that it's on. But I couldn't tell if it was working or not because when I tried, you know, doing this, or I tried the keyboard, or I tried to have a noise in the background, it sounded exactly the same to me, regardless of whether I had the ANC on or the ANC off. So from my experience. This ANC was useless, and, and I, I think it's useless anyway because the this is a closed back headset, and the passive noise cancelling is so good on this thing. <laughs> so I don't think you need this active noise cancelling because the passive is good enough. But um, you know they 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 want to they want to justify the price, right? So they put in all these little things. But with the ANC not working that great and the Bluetooth being intermittent, like. Uh, I would have to I would have to say that's a fail. Great to have those features, but they have to work flawlessly in order for me to be happy. Anyway, this one doesn't have it. Doesn't have the ANC and uh it does have the Bluetooth dough. So, that's it for the features there. Let's talk about the sound quality for the two of them. Okay, so both of them have um very 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 good sound. And uh it's what, nice, nicely separated. Your your bass is good. It's not overpowering. The rumbles are in the right place. You know, like the, the thickness of the bass is, is is not too much. It's not too thin. It's my opinion for playing Battlefield Five because to me everything is about Battlefield Five. Or it's 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 perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Just like the H6 is perfect, right? And the H3 is perfect. And the H3 Pro Hybrid perfect. And on here, perfect. They do have. A couple of problems though, and I'll get to that in a second. Now, so great with the with the bass, the the the, the mids, also perfect. The voices come through perfectly on this. The, they come through perfectly on the six seventy. They come through perfectly on, on the on the on the H six. Epos has nailed the bass and the mids uh, perfectly on these headsets. These are wonderful headsets for gaming, right, and for uh, FPS in general. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the highs, the H6 Pro has nailed it perfectly, in my opinion. Right? The um, the 670, although it seems well balanced, the volume is too low on on the 670. So it 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 never gets to that level of volume that you would that I think most people would really want when you're dealing with an with an FPS when you're playing an FPS right. It's just always been a little bit too low on the 670. So that's the flaw of the 670. The volume does not go high enough. The H6 Pro is perfect volume, perfect balanced, separated, perfect mids, everything perfect on that. This guy here almost perfect. One flaw, and that is the highs. It's a little bit too bright. I don't know what they did because I don't remember it be being that bright on the H3 when I reviewed the H3, but the H3 Pro Hybrid is bright. The high is a little bit too high. This guy here, the H6 Pro, the high goes right up to the line. This one here just goes over the line a little bit, if that helps you know, in understanding what I'm talking about. It's just a little bit too bright. Now, that's not going to bother a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be fine with that, so you're good there. Uh, when you use this on PC, you can manipulate the EQs and the presets, and all, so you're good there. You can adjust it and have it sound exactly how you want it. The only concern is when you're playing on a console. When I put it on the PS5, it's just a titch too bright, and because it's on the console, I can't manipulate the EQ or do anything like that. All I can do to counter it is turn down the volume. Luckily for me, the volume wheel on this thing, on the H3 Pro Hybrid is just, you know, it's, it's great, it's, it's nice and loud, so I can turn it down if I have to and be okay. So that's how I'm managing the brightness of this one. It's it's not like super bright, but it's, you can you can tell when you're firing your weapon, it's a ooh, little, like, I just like, ah, yee, gotta make an adjustment there, right? I don't have that problem with your A6 Pro. So, this is almost a perfect headset. This is all, you know, I get, and I, you can almost say it is a per perfect headset because a lot of people are not gonna have a problem with the brightness. I just had a problem because I'm a little bit sensitive to head headphones and headsets that are bright. Um, so for me, this is, a, this is as, as a wireless headset, it, it lost half a point for 
for being, you know, on the bright side. And then it lost a full point for flaky um, features like the ANC that I couldn't tell if it was working and the Bluetooth that worked intermittently. So it lost a full point for that, right? Bringing it down to like an eight, eight and a half out of 10, which is, you know, it's all relative. It's all, it's, it's subjective and, it, it, you know, it doesn't really mean much. But it's just that it, this, this could have been a, this could have been a 10, you know, it could have been a perfect, perfect 10 for me, not for you, but for me, this could have been a perfect 10. Uh, it was that close. So, okay. So the sound on this, like I said, compared to the H3 is, uh, the volume is just lower, but the sound itself is, is very good. This is just on the little, on the brighter side. Now let's get to the microphone. I'm going to try my best to do a microphone test and put it in there for you. But, um, from what my friends have told me from listening to me play, the microphones on these two are phenomenal. I've had no complaints about this. I've never had any complaints about the 670. Everybody said it was great. And they say that the H6, the H3 hy uh, Pro Hybrid is crystal clear. So it looks to me, <clears throat> excuse me, and again, I have to do the test and I'll throw the test in in the video, but it looks to me that, or sounds to me that EPOS has nailed it again with the, uh, with the microphone. So phenomenal microphone. Phenomenal sound, just a little bit too bright. Great comfort, great design, um, and well, you know the features. Not too sure about. People might have different experiences than I than I had. So it's a better headset than the 670. So if you're looking between which one to buy, do not buy the 670. Buy the uh, H3 Pro Hybrid. So we can just throw that out of the way. Goodbye. You're done. Never going to see you again. It was nice, but it's time for me to move on. All right, now, here's the other part. Where does this stand in regards to the HS80? This is the part that's been bugging me the most. The HS80 has a phenomenal microphone. The sound is very good. It's not, it's, it's good, it's very good. Very, very good. But it's not as great as the H6, but we're not talking about the H6. We're talking about the H3 Pro Hybrid. And because this guy is a little bit bright, I've got to give the sound to the HS80 because it's, it's yeah, I have to. So they, they're, they're equal on the mic. The sound on HS, HS80 is a little bit more tolerable than, than this one. But again, this is this is only minor, and it, you can easily adjust it with a, with a, just turning down the volume a little bit, or having to, or, or you know, changing the EQs, right? Um, comfort is, I, they, they both have excellent comfort. It just comes down to whether you like the ski band or whether you like this. I'm fine with this. I find with the ski bands, they tend to just to pull up a little bit. Like the, the cups here, they, you put them on the side of your head and they, because it's a ski band, it kind of just pulls it up a little bit. Like the Steel Series Arctis Pro Wireless, that was terrible. Like you put that on your head and then it would just go up your head because the, the, the band would pull it. And the um, HS80 was a tiny little bit of that, but not much. So I'd have to give the edge to, I, I'm going to call it a draw because the ski band on the top of your head is a phenomenal feeling. It, it just, it's like, it's not even there, right? Um, but this is also excellent. So I'm going to say it's a draw when it comes to, to comfort. But who's going to take the number one spot? Oh, that's a tough one. If I had these features working flawlessly the first time around, then I would say the H3 Pro Hybrid takes the number one spot. But because I did not have those features working properly, like the Bluetooth was intermittent, kept cutting out, the ANC, I couldn't tell whether it was working or not. And the fact that the price of this is much more than the HS80, because price is a factor, guys. It is a factor. I got to give the number one spot to the HS80. There you go. I'm sorry, but that's... That's the way it is, right? I love what EPOS is doing, but I got to call it as I see it. And right now, considering the performance, what you get and the price, the number one wireless gaming headset is the HS80 
followed by the H3 Pro Hybrid, and then third spot would be the GS uh, P670, and the fourth spot would be the Astro A20. There you have it, okay? I know this is a long review, but um, I needed to go through those things. And anyway, so I'll throw on the mic um, uh, recording for you and enjoy. I hope this was worth the wait. I hope if you're looking for a new wireless headset, you will strongly consider looking at the HS80 from Corsair and looking at the uh, H3 Pro Hybrid from Epos. Get them both, try them both. You decide what you like. But based on my time with this and the other one, I got to give it to the HS80. Well done, Corsair. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you around. All right. Peace. Okay, here we are again in Battlefield 5. We're doing a microphone review for the H3 Pro Hybrid from EPOS. You are listening to me now using that microphone. So let's uh, run around a little bit, shoot some bullets, have a little fun, try to give you guys an idea of how this microphone sounds. All right. So I just want to talk about the uh, the H3 Pro Hybrid. Oh, 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 oh! Where are you, buddy? Oh, there he is. Okay, yeah. So I want to talk about the H3 Pro Hybrid. Come on, die already! So, whoa, whoa! Got me from behind. Um, it's a very nice headset. I I really like the uh, the wireless. Uh, headset portion of it, you know, it's it's so so great having wireless, especially when it's implemented very well. I felt it was implemented very well with this uh, with this headset. Although the active noise cancelling and the Bluetooth leave a little bit to be desired, I'm happy with the performance of the uh, wireless in this. And uh, when we listen to this recording, we'll know for sure how we feel about the microphone. Even though when you record it on the PS5 and you play it back through, you know, through my uh, editing software and then and then through YouTube, it, it's not going to be as great as it is when you're actually listening to it uh, live. But, you know, it's still going to be still going to be pretty good. So anyway, that's it. My name is Troy. This is Troy Online, and this is a review of the uh, H3 Pro Hybrid microphone. Hope you enjoy it. Hope this is a headset that you'd be interested in. And, uh, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. And just don't forget, I'm... Oh, die already, dude. Oh, somebody got him for me. Thank you. Just remember that um, I don't have any sponsors. I don't have any partners. I'm not affiliated with anybody. I buy all these headsets myself. If you'd like to support me, um, subscribe. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And if you like the video, you like his content, then hit that like button. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Take care, guys. Until the next video. Okay. Peace.